The thumbnail's not clickbait, guys. My 6900K overclocked 4.4 gigahertz doubles the performance increase in Cinebench multi-threaded benchmarks compared to the Ryzen's gap to the 6900K at stock. I'm genuinely really excited about the new Ryzen architecture. It would be great to see some competitive tension back into the CPU market, which has been sadly missing for about 13 years. And I own both the Athlon XP and the Athlon 64, both of which were fantastic CPUs. And remember that Intel actually had to lease the 64-bit microarchitecture from AMD so that they could produce 64-bit variants of their x86 platform. So AMD certainly landed some significant technology in the time that they've been in the CPU industry. So I'm genuinely pleased to see Ryzen back and performing, but I think we should be very, very careful. And remember that we've only seen very select benchmarks from AMD that they will have handpicked to have shown their new microarchitecture at its absolute best. And I think one of my other reflections is that we're talking about quite an old architecture that they're comparing against for Intel. So the Haswell architecture came out in its four core variant back in 2015. The enthusiast version of that platform, the Haswell E, which it produced us the 6900 and the 6950X, came out almost a year ago, May 2016, that architecture came out. So it's great that AMD have caught up. It's great that they may even have a performance boost over that current family of Intel CPUs. And certainly the pricing point raises an eyebrow or two, very, very, very competitive pricing from AMD. But is it just that? Is it just that AMD have managed to catch up? Have Intel got something cooking in, in the kitchen? And I think for me, the most important success factor for AMD's quote enthusiast platform will be the overclocking performance of the Ryzen CPU. Now we have seen absolutely no official releases or benchmarks from AMD about the performance of Ryzen. There is some speculation of a screenshot that's circulating the internet that someone's got that up to 5.2 gigahertz and has set the world record for Cinebench multi-threaded performance. Now, that may or may not be true and may or may not be indicative of what is a normal overclocking potential in a Ryzen 1800X. Of course, the Silicon Lottery will apply for AMD CPUs exactly the same as it will for Intel CPUs. There are some other differences between the two platforms as well. So AMD's AM4 platform has significantly less PCIe Express lanes. Typically on their very high-end motherboards, you've got 16 total for GPU. So if you're running an SLI or Crossfire setup, that's eight PCI Express lanes per card, but it does have an additional four lanes available for solid state drives that connect in via an M2 port NVMe. That's via the CPU, not via a bridge, so you're gonna get pretty good performance. It's also dropped what we get on the X99 platform in terms of quad channel memory performance, so there's only dual channel performance, but none of these things, to be fair to AMD, have particularly driven significant performance differentiation on the X99 platform. So feels a bit like they've dropped the dross and focused on the architecture of the chip to drive great performance. So I genuinely, genuinely hope that the Ryzen 1800X and indeed the entire rest of the family are absolutely fantastic performers. I genuinely hope that it drives Intel to drop its pricing. But if I'm really honest with you guys, what I really, really hope that happens is that Intel come out swinging, that they come out with their new generation of both their enthusiast platform and their standard desktop off offering, that they release the eighth generation of i7s early and that they on a clock for clock basis really stand toe to toe with AMD. So we can genuinely could be looking at a really exciting 2017 uh, both in terms of GPU performance and CPU performance, because of course, remember that AMD have got their latest lineup of GPUs hot off the heels of their Ryzen release. And lest us not forget that the GeForce clock is ticking, so uh, only a number of days to go before the impending and very likely release of the GTX 1080 Ti. So it'd be fantastic to see what kind of performance that's got. So it's Running into spring, guys, it's technology release times, genuinely really, really exciting times. So 
In conclusion to this video, my sincere advice to you all guys is hold off pre-ordering Ryzen. Wait until some samples have been released to reviewers and that we've actually got some perspective other than AMD's view on the world. I find it rather bizarre that I can't actually find a specification sheet on AMD's website. Trust me, I've searched and I've searched and I've searched. I also find it very strange that there have been no review samples as of yet released prior to AMD putting the CPU on pre-order. So keep your powder dry, guys. Genuinely hope that AMD's released an absolute stonker of a chip, but I really hope that Intel come out swinging too. There we go, guys. Slightly different perspective on Ryzen. I hope you're really well aware of in the world you are. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, please make sure that you do so, so you don't miss all the fantastic content to come. And I'll see you in my next video.